to once again welcome us to this very important occasion. When in the year 2012, the founder of Gregory University, which was Professor Gregory Ketchukwe Ibe, had the vision of setting up a citadel of learning. One of the things that he actually wanted to do was to raise a platform that would empower young people to deliver radical solutions to a highly challenged society. And one of the programs that he actually wanted to use to achieve this mandate is the medical program. So he did everything to realize the establishment of the Gregory University College of Medicine and Health Sciences. And after many years of knowledge transfer, last year, the year 2023, the pioneer set of 19 doctors we have been east from Gregory University to Rome. Vice Chancellor, please, it is that way that I would like to welcome all of us to this sophomore induction of uh, fresh doctors from the stable of Gregory University to Rome. I'd like to say you are most welcome in Jesus' name. Let me. functional skills and 
college. I thank everybody, both academic and non-academic staff. You have worked. I know the commitment. And I sincerely thank the CMP. Please, you have really worked for us. Continue. Don't be tired. Please, a round of applause for them. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I bring you warm greetings from the Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria, from the Chairman of the Council, Professor Fulabi Messi, the Registrar and CEO of the Council, Dr. Fatima Kiari, who has um, directed me to be here at today's occasion. She is also somewhere busy in Lagos. There's an induction there, and she is there, and she has asked me to represent her at this occasion. For some of us, it's our first time coming in contact with the Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria. So I'd like to say a little bit about that, especially to those who have been inducted today. There's need for you to know your council, You've known your university all this while. So I would like to say one or two things about the Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria. The MDCN was established in 1963, 18th of December to be precise. And since then, it has been in the business of regulating the medical, dental, and alternative medicine profession. To date, we have well over 110,000 doctors that have been so registered and have been inducted. Like this ceremony is taking place today. I also particularly observed at today's occasion that we have about 90% or so of females to be inducted. Yes, that was my very first observation. And in the last three years, We've seen that trend at the Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria. And as we speak, we have candidates who studied abroad who want to practice in Nigeria. We are going to write in the assessment exam uh, next month. We have also a large number of females who are going to sit for that exam. So um, I think it's something positive for the country. We are seeing women take up leadership positions. In the United States, there's a lady vying for the president, which is encouraging to balance the gender. So the council regulates these professions, as I earlier said. We have the mandates given to us by the Act, Medical and Dental Practitioners Act, CAP, M8. Law of the Federation of Nigeria 2004. And the first thing is for us is to ensure that we determine the knowledge and skills of all persons seeking to become members of the medical dental profession. And then we register them. And this is the process of that registration. After you have studied, you've acquired knowledge and skills, you've learned the act of medicine. Then we will adopt you, register you, and then you become a medical practitioner. However, as you are, you are going to be provisionally registered. That means your name is in pencil. It's in pencil. It can easily be raised. You cannot be brought before the disciplinary organs of council because you are not a full doctor. One, two, three, go. I, doctor. Hearing your names. I, doctor. Good, good. Do sincerely and solemnly declare that as a registered medical practitioner of Nigeria, I shall exercise the several parts of my profession to the best of my knowledge and ability for the good, safety, and welfare. Of all persons committing themselves to my care and attention. And that I will faithfully obey the rules and regulations of the Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria and all other laws that are 
vaid for the control of the medical profession in Nigeria. There are all other laws, there are policies, there is the Health Act, which you must know. So we'll go to the, the meat of today's ceremony, which is the physician pledge. And with your right hand up, you also repeat after me. I solemnly pledge to dedicate my life to the service of humanity, the health and well-being of my patients, to be my first consideration. We have some of you on strike. That's another matter. But this is what is the health and well being of my patients will be my first consideration. I will respect the autonomy and dignity of my patients. I will maintain the utmost respect for human life. I will not permit considerations of age, disease, or disease. Creed, ethnic origin, gender, nationality, political aspect, sexual orientation, social standing, or any other factor to intervene between my duty. I will respect the secrets that are confided in me, even after the patient. I will practice my profession with conscience and dignity and in accordance with good medical practice. I will foster the honor and tradition of the medical profession. I will give to my teachers the respect which is their duty. I will share my medical knowledge for the benefit of the patient the advancement of healthcare. I will attend to my own health, well being, and abilities in order to provide care of the highest standard. I will not use my medical knowledge to violate human rights and civil liberties, even under threat. And so, I made this promise. Freely, solemnly, and upon my honor. So help me God. Congratulations. Focus, focus, one more thing. 
and the and as I've earlier said okay, about the uh, ethical considerations, let's show some respect to some categories of people that are here. They have brought you this far. Without them, I don't think that you will become doctors today. First, can you please focus? Focus, please. Please focus. Please, parents, guidance, can you just allow them to focus? One more minute and I'll be out of here. First is to the university. They have provided you the enabling environment. They have run to NBC, run to MDCN, and all other critical stakeholders to ensure that you have in place the right resource or resources for your training. And I'm registrar, and I'm chair, vice chancellor. Sorry, I'm used to registrar. <laughs> and eventually, my registrar is the teacher. So, uh, I would request that you please stand. <laughs> Now you're going to bow to the university. The vice chancellor here represents the university. They provided you that enabling environment for you to become doctors today. So in the way of appreciation, they're going to take a big, big bow and bow. You're not doing it right. I'll ask her not to give you your gift. So at the count of three, you're going to bow. One, two, three. No, you're not doing it well. I'm not doing it well. Yes. One, two, three, go. Thank you very much. Now, the second bow goes to a very important group of sets of those who have contributed to your life in no little way. They taught you the art of medicine. It's an art. We went through that two years. Without them, we cannot be standing. And they are one of the best we have in the country. They have chosen not to jump back. They have stayed to ensure that they own their skills and they also help the country to produce more doctors. You are very, you are highly skilled professionals. You know, the world are going to look for you. And these are the people who made it possible. So, Mr. Provoster, you are going to take this bow on behalf of all the teachers. So at the count of three, he's looking and, you know, without him, you can't get your license still. So, you are going to bow at the count of three. One, two, three, go. Okay. He did it well. Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, today we gather to celebrate a remarkable milestone, our induction into the medical profession. To all our esteemed, our esteemed parents and the distinguished elites class of 2022, we have made a significant leap from students to doctors. We have transitioned from receiving care to providing it, from being the beneficiaries to becoming the benefactors of health and life. Congratulations to each and every one of us. As we welcome the second badge of inductees, we reflect on our journey. A journey marked by trials, triumph, and unforgettable moments. We have been a diverse group from the diligent early risers to the vibrant personalities who made our classes engaging. We have had a mix of studios, the spirited, the street smart, all contributing to a dynamic and enriching experience. Our path has been as much about the bond we forged as it has been about the knowledge we acquired. First and foremost, I give thanks to the Almighty God, the ultimate source of life and wisdom, whose grace has guided us through this journey. His example of compassion and dedication is the model every physician should strive to emulate. We also we also owe a profound debt of gratitude to our families, guidance, and sponsors. Your investment in our education, both financially and emotionally, has been invaluable. Special thanks to my own parents, Honorable and Mrs. Obo Friday Ogarayan, and my siblings for their unwavering support and sacrifice, especially during the challenging times when I had to return from abroad to Nigeria. I extend my heartfelt, heartfelt appreciation to the management board of Gregory University, the dean, the provost, deputy provost, and not to forget Professor Iweha of Blessed Memory, and Dr. Onoha, dean of basic medical science, for their great contribution in our growth. A special thank to you, Ms. Stella, for her dedicated effort to ensure our success. <laughs> to our teachers and lecturers, 
your role in our development cannot be overstated. You have been more than educators, you have been our guides, friends, parents. You transform us from high school graduates, high school graduates who move toxic stuff at the clinic into capable doctors. And your commitment has shaped our journey in profound ways. The non-academic staff also deserve our gratitude for their unique contribution to our education. Thank you very much. To, uh, to my mentors and supporters, especially Dr. Rebellan Peace for being a mother and support system, Dr. Uche Udemezu for being a friend, and sister, the CMDA House, particularly Dr. Ye Jumude, Chairman of the CMDA, uh, Abia State, the and other organizations like the NSI Youth Cancer Center and Saraka Cancer Nigeria Initiative and the Nigeria Cancer Society. Thank you for your invaluable support and encouragement. To my fellow in Dottis, as you step into your new roles, remember to make Gregory University proud. Our time together has taught us not just academic lessons, but also resilient teamwork and perseverance. I am confident that you will continue to achieve greatness and make a positive impact in the world. To my colleagues still in school, I offer words of encouragement. The path may seem daunting and the te temptation to give up may be strong, but perseverance is key. Keep pushing forward and remember that God is your strength and guide. One day you will stand here as we do today, ready to take the Hippocratic vote and dedicate your life to this noble profession. Thank you all for being here and for honoring us with your presence on this special day. We appreciate your support a lot. May you all remain blessed. Thank you very much. I mean, I'm Professor Selen Jabu, the Vice Chancellor of the University of Jabu. I am responsible for this today. Fantastic, especially if you were there, that we have more girls now than men. I don't know where our men are going to. So the girls are numbering the number of boys eh, that we are uh, inducted today. So I'm so happy about it. But we have trained them. They have the skills. They have the competencies. How do you train them? And the people who train them are wonderful. How do you think the medical profession will evolve in the next decade? How do you think the medical profession will evolve in the next decade? In the what? In the next decade. Wow. With what we are seeing now, if you had been with them when they were defending, you know that we have another crop of medical doctors and technological skills is there. So, so they are wonderful. to say to our newly educated Yes, to follow the ethics of the profession. The code is important, just like the representative of the registrar said. If they leave it, that's the end. And that's why we are shouting to the medical skills. Let them follow the ethical code. Okay, finally, I'm still in this chapter from the government. What do you think about this particular set of people who were just released? Are you sure they will not also jump out because of the system of the Yes, but just like the question she asked, they will not. We have confidence in this one. It's just not because we are here. I've already talked to them. And I've impacted on them so much. It's just like Pina, there's nothing you can talk about this thing except education. And that education, the morals are there, the competencies are there, the fear of God is there. And that's what we have injected in them. So watch them, follow them up. We will be very happy. I, I am Dr. Victor Palawali <laughs> Biro, I'm a deputy registrar. And I head the planning, research, and statistics department at the Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria. And today you are representing. Yeah, so I'm representing uh, my my principal, the person of Dr. Fatima Kiari, who is the registrar and chief executive officer of the Medical and Dental Council. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, so uh, what is your confidence on this set of people you just visited? Yeah, the confidence is high because this is an accredited um, institution by the accredited by both the MDCN. Uh, which is my where, where I represent and the National University Commission. So we are confident that um, uh, they have been well trained in character and in Well, my charge to them, like I earlier said, and, and that is what the council stands by. We regulate the profession of medicine, that is an alternative medicine. So the um, important thing for them is to ensure that they abide by the ethics of the profession. 
They have been taught, so they have the knowledge, they have the skill. But their character, they are the way they conduct themselves, you know, in the care of their patients. When they meet with their colleagues, when they meet with the larger society, you know, is what matters. So they must ensure they abide by the ethics of this profession. And that is the basis for which the Hippocratic Oath was administered to them today. How do you think the medical profession will evolve in the next decade? How do I think the medical profession will evolve in the next decade? Well, if it is. <laughs> Um, 
a member of the um, Nigerian Cancer Society. Um, while I was still in school, I was also the um, national director for um, Nigerian Medical School, technical officer on cancer awareness and advocacy. And I did a lot of research and a lot of advocacy and awareness um, activities. And I still do that now. I enjoy voluntary services where I serve humanity, help those that are less privileged, and take care of the sick. Even after I left medical school, I engaged in um, free medical um, services to when there's an outreach and all that. And I was just thinking, really not, uh, they are doing so well, they did so well. And I believe that it will not just end there. They will take this mindset and go out there. I was in a class of one of the brightest and most diligent people. Though we have our funny moments, but it was wonderful. And I believe that this set of medical students in Red University are, if not one of the best that this school has produced.